First of all, I'd like to welcome everyone. It's always a, a pleasure to be at a project that's completed, occupied, and very successful. And sometimes whenever you look at a new building, you know, I always looked at it this way, that it is a sign of how one views their future. So for Preferred Freezer, this is a wonderful opportunity. They see their future as very bright, you know, building a new building and being able to occupy it you know, with their clients as well as it's a symbol for the town itself. And the town itself has an opportunity that have uh, you know, commerce here and the ability to have a new uh, building, uh, employees, and, and it's really great for everyone. So I really like to give a big thanks to uh, uh, the mayor and uh, Mayor McCormick and the community. I think they were very wonderful to work with, uh, seamless. You know, many towns that we're developing in, sometimes it takes years to get approvals, and I can tell you that this went very smoothly for us, and we're really pleased to be here. Uh, to my partner, Frank Greek, who uh, did most of the construction, probably did the hard work, I guess, but I want to thank him uh, for being involved with us. It was uh, truly uh, seamless with them as well. So with that, uh, the opportunity to introduce uh, Frank Greek and... Uh, we're pleased to be in this community, and this is a wonderful project for everyone. Thank you. Valentine's Day, 1913, uh, 2013. Peter and I signed a contract to buy an old beat-up truck facility that had all kinds of environment, I would say environmentally challenged project. And uh, we were supposed to take this piece of garbage and make it a really nice facility. So, working with Peter, working with John's crew, John Gallagher's crew at Preferred, working with Mayor McCormick's crew at the township, uh, we put together a project that came in on time, and actually below budget. Uh, we could not have done it without the very close cooperation with both our client and the township, and we really, really thank them immensely for working with us as part of the team to be able to put this facility together, and uh, hopefully John will make lots and lots of money and employ lots and lots of people at this facility, and, and the mayor will be happy with the facility and uh, the fact that it's employing a lot of the local people. And with that, I think that it's time to give John a scissors that will eventually cut the ribbon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, maybe you'll talk to us about... Yeah, I don't, you I don't about need to stand at the podium. Um, <clears throat> I just want to thank everyone involved, from Peter at the Advance Group and, and Frank at Greek, and of course the mayor and the other administrators from the town. Um, we've enjoyed rapid, consistent growth. And in the past three years, we've built 12 facilities. And I can say unequivocally, this was absolutely one of the easiest and smoothest ones to do. The cooperation with the town in a complicated state, a complicated county, and a complicated redevelopment area was as easy as where we built in the middle of Washington state on Greenland. And that was pretty remarkable. So it's just, we got to thank everybody that helped push it through, get it done, be practical about things, make it economical and expeditious, which means a lot. Time means money. So it means a lot to get industry and you know, governments together that realize that, the value of time. You've got to do it by the opportunities there, you got to do it efficiently and effectively, and things here couldn't have gone smoother. And then the other people I want to thank is, yeah, hi. you've got the staff who runs the building, Michael Bowman and John Ingrassi and Dave Ashford, the people who preferred, because, you know, I do what I do at the top, but it's the people on the day to day that run the business every day. They did an unbelievable job of getting this place from zero to full and profitable probably as fast as any freezer we've opened on the East Coast in our history. They did as good a startup job as any we've ever had. Usually you hear startups like a new restaurant, you don't want to go there until it's a month old. This place did not have that. Every customer was happy the minute they got here. We've had no ripples in the smoothness of the operation. So a lot needs to go off to those people because if you start it wrong like a restaurant, bad things happen in the first two or three years. You've got to get your reputation right from the day you open the doors. And they've done a tremendous job with that. So with that, thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, <clears throat> you heard mayor, mayor, mayor. Everybody says the mayor. I was here 
almost two years ago for the groundbreaking, it was just a big pile of rubble. I didn't say the words preferred freezer. I didn't hear one thing about the word, the company preferred freezer. I didn't do anything, nothing, between that day almost two years ago and today. Not a single memo, not a single email, nothing. So that's, that's my job, is to pick the right people to do things so that I don't have to hear about anything. And the two people responsible for that are here today. Carolyn Ehrlich is the head of the Woodbridge Redevelopment Agency. This is a redevelopment zone. Uh, it's got a payment in lieu of taxes. It's, that's, that's what helped attract uh, Preferred Freezer and Peter and Frank to this area. And of course, Martilevsky runs our planning department. Uh, they're the two that, when everybody said it was seamless, when everybody said it was easy uh, and, and you know, record breaking, it's because of those two and their departments. So I want to thank Mart. I want to thank Carol with them. We have Eric, we have Chris from uh, Marta's shop. We have Hank, who's the head of our redevelopment agency. All these people work together to make me look good and to make us look good. Uh, we also have Corey Spiller here from the Third Ward. He's the councilman who represents this area. Uh, probably the same thing. He's been in, in office for six months, probably never heard of anything because there's been no problems because of, of these two and because of the job that the town does. So I want to thank you uh, all very much for that. We also have a couple other town people here. Nancy Drummer, First Ward Councilwoman, is here, but she's actually here as our Chamber of Commerce Membership Director. Karen Barnes is here as the uh, pre uh, Executive Director of the Chamber of Commerce, and some other staff is here as well. I also want to say how much it is a pleasure to work with people like Frank and Peter. I've known these men since before I was mayor, uh, and they just are a pleasure to deal with. And John from Preferred Freezer, they're just honorable when they give you their word. They do what they said they're going to do. And that's why this project went so good, because we're dealing with such good, solid, honorable, honest business people. So I want to thank them for investing in Woodbridge. And when you're ready to go, I'm going to put you in my car. We're going to drive around. We're going to look for more spots for you to come in and just build some more things in town, because that's, that's how great an experience it was with you here in Woodbridge Township. So I want to thank you again for investing in our town. And like I said, uh, please do more. And we have proclamations, official mayor's proclamations. For the three of you, uh, F Creek Development, Frank. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we have the pictures here, so come on over. All right. Thank you. And we have, uh, oh, this also says F Creek Development. This probably is, let's see. They're all worth a different name. Let me see. Uh, they all, they're all. They're all the same proc? Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. Come on, John. <laughs> <They all> have, <laughs> I'm looking for an individual name here. Gentlemen, right here. Great. Okay, and Peter. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Peter, right here. Great. And I'm going to get all three of your props. Hold up your props. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a report card. <laughs> <laughs> and they will block them. Got it? All right, thank you all very much. Now let's go cut a ribbon. Great. Two, one. Thank you everybody for coming. We appreciate it. Um, show you around the new uh, facility here in Woodbridge. Um, what we have here right now is our control room. Every facility and warehouse basically has one. We have a shipping window here to our left. To the right of that is our receiving window, and this whole back wall is our inventory. Okay? So here, kind of all the coordination between all the inbound product and all the outbound product happens, all the interface with the customers and the drivers and the carriers and such, whether we're bringing product from the port or it's coming over the road, we're importing it, whether it's meat, seafood, beef, poultry, whatever it might be, um, we coordinate through these windows here. Um, we move probably about a million pounds of throughput on a daily basis in and out. Um, our facility, which we'll show you in a little bit, holds about 27,363 pallets, and we're roughly 10 million cubic feet, all right? Shipping and receiving all happens here. All that coordination happens here. This is our inventory wall, okay? Inventory is kind of really important for what we do, okay? Um, we don't want to become our customer's biggest customer, right? So every single day we have people that are going into that freezer, they're counting every single pallet position every single day. We count this freezer two times a month, top to bottom. It's a rolling inventory, but an inventory nonetheless. Um, we make sure that the product is supposed to be in the right location is the right product. We also make sure that there's the integrity of the product is maintained. 
clean, neat, not torn cases, no exposed product, because at the end of the day, we're feeding a lot of people out of this place. We take that stuff very seriously. To that end, we just received our BRC certification. Um, so we are kind of held to one of the highest standards in the industry on food safety, defense, food safety, and protocol in, in that regard as well. I'm about to take you guys into the dock, so if you want to take a walk, we'll take a walk into the dock. All right, so this is our loading and unloading dock, right? This is a little bit unique and different from what our competition kind of offers. Most of our competition, the freezer is 35 feet tall. Our dock is 35 feet tall. Our freezer is 65 feet tall, okay? We'll talk about kind of the reasoning behind that in a little bit, but the reason we're 35 feet tall up here is really simple. We keep the heat up and off and away from the product, all right? The heat is gonna rise. The heat gets away from the product. If you look, you'll also see that all this product that's sitting on the dock, there's no frost, there's no condensation on it. The reason for that is in our refrigeration system, we have desiccant dehumidification built in. So we're taking the moist air, we're burning off the humidity and cycling dry air back into this dock here. Along with that, we have some special dock doors. You'll notice that the dock plates are up and inside the door. The trucks will back in, I'll show you guys when we walk down in a second. The trucks will back in and then open their doors inside the facility. You don't open your doors outside and then back in the truck. Helps with a couple of things. One, you know, you like to make sure that pests don't have an opportunity to come in one. Two, you help to maintain the integrity of the temperature and the moisture inside the facility, right? You're not letting that much warm air in in the summer. You're not letting that much cold kind of moist air come in in the later evenings of the winter. It also helps us to control if we open it up a container. Oftentimes a container on the water, the boat's shifting, product may shift and fall. Nothing falls on the street. If it's gonna fall, it's gonna fall right here in a controlled environment that we know has been clean and we know is being maintained, all right? Our dock is also about 90 feet, 95 feet deep. That allows us to prep an entire truck or unload an entire truck with enough opportunity for us to walk around and check the integrity of the pallet on the way in and on the way out. We count every single case that comes through these doors. We count every single case three times that leave these doors. Three times in, three times out, okay? Um, we'll take a walk down. We'll show you a little bit more of the dock. So this is a perfect example. This is a container that came to us from overseas, either Netherlands or Spain. Um, we're doing a lot of import of uh, some eggs, right? Um, avian flu, bird flu, you guys are familiar with. There's actually a shortage of eggs in the United States. We're helping to kind of fill that void here. So what happens is the door will open on the inside and they'll actually take the dock plate, raise it up, and you'll see the guys behind me are going in, literally taking the boxes off, putting them on a pallet, building them up, and they look just like that behind you there. You'll see that every one of our pallets have a lot sticker with a barcode. We have two lot stickers. They go on the front and on the back of every single pallet. That lot number is ours. We can track now with that lot number everything from where the product originated from to where it went to. All right, so in the event of a recall, we can go and find every single case that left the building. You'll also notice the refrigeration system on the roof here. This is circulating the air perpendicular to the doors. You won't see blowers on the back wall of our dock. It's kind of counterintuitive, right? You open up a door, hot air is going to rush in and rise, cold air is going to blow right out. We don't do it that way. We circulate it perpendicular to the room to try and counteract that air. So we're going to go inside the freezer now. We'll talk here for a second because I know it's going to be really, really cold in there and not everyone's going to want to stick around, right? You're going to notice a couple of things in our freezer. The first of which you're going to see a raised curb and it looks a lot like that yellow curb right there, okay? You'll also notice that that curb is the height of a pallet. That means when we're driving past that curb, we're gonna clip anything, it's gonna be the board, not the product. You're also gonna see single deep aisles with one product in the location and very narrow. That means that only one guy or gal can be working inside that location, one guy or gal is picking in those locations, and also the racking is recessed, which means if we drive by and for whatever reason a pallet tips or we clip something, we're not gonna hit innocent bystanding product that's just kinda hanging out doing its own thing, okay? We'll take you through now. the freezer it doesn't go to the dock until it's ready to ship 
about 30 to minutes to an hour before it's ready to go. We try and maintain the cold chain as much as we possibly can, because at the end of the day, this is all gonna wind up on our plates, right? This is Freddie, he's our operations manager. Freddie works in concert with Dave, the general manager, to make sure that this building does what I just told you it's gonna do, and what I tell all our prospective customers it's gonna do, these are the guys that cash the checks that I write every day, all right? That's kind of it. Thank you very much for joining this tour. Uh, we're very excited to be here as part of the Woodbridge business community. We thank everybody for their support and uh, look forward to a great, uh, a great time here in Woodbridge.